Now I really put my body through torture, and the irony is I'm going to outlast all you sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah. So suck it. Um, but we'll yeah. see. All right. So th- we've navigated our way to Denver. Yeah. You actually had a phys- like we all picture y'all, and it's not y'all as in like you particularly, but reality stars seem to ride that wave as long as they fucking can. Yeah. Like there's guys still doing the challenge, and the Miz so, is now okay. a wrestler, and like there's a yeah, there's a line that you drew. You're like, I have a real job. Right. So one thing that is is very um, deceiving, I think, is there's no money in reality TV, right? Like unless you win that million, everyone else is not making enough to retire on. And even the person with the million after taxes really doesn't have enough money to never work again unless they live in like Mississippi. But hey, fuck you. <laughs> that is so Did you know that? No. Okay. Well, at least you didn't say Alabama. She's from fucking Meth Dade's Ella. That is true. Florida. Florida. Yeah, but Fort Lauderdale is still expensive to live in, even. With your meth addiction, so, oh, so well, I feel like Mississippi is probably like a really low. You did go to high property tax and shitty drugs. That's yeah. not my bad. We come right near from the port of New Orleans. We get all the good drugs it, and good food. We could have worn jean shorts, white tees, and some gold chains, and you would have been taken right back Hernandez. to college. Yeah, or a, a pair of shorts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're a Tebow guy. <laughs> okay. Yep. We found common interest mm-hmm. again. All right. Okay, so, so there's not uh, so much money. There's not, so here's the thing. The problem is if you do reality TV and then you're recognizable, people are like, well, I recognize you. Why are you working as a waitress at this restaurant? Or why are you, you know, and so when I first did the show, in my mind, one of the, the person that casted me was like, the best advice I can give you is to go back to whatever you were doing before you ever got on that show. No matter how well you do, no matter what happens, just go back to doing your, your normal job. And if something else comes your way, it will. And that was really great advice because all these people with these fantastic, some people are like third person voted out and they're like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to travel the world or I'm going to, there's this, this weird idea, both from fans of the show and actual idiots that are on the show that they're, do you know, at this point, there's been 500 people on Survivor. You're not special. We can't even charge for appearances because unlike... That's why you're on this podcast. That's exactly right. Because unlike... Uh, so we couldn't afford you. Much, much more... So right now, when I first started, there was no social media. There wasn't even Facebook. Now you can actually monetize your Instagram and your Twitter, but a couple of problems. One, the Survivor demographic is not. It's either children or like older. It's not that, that real nice wheelhouse that Bachelor or Big Brother has. Where or they've the, got the ability. Vacancy, there you go. 24 to the 44 demographic. And that's really what you need. So, like, whereas I'm somebody who I went and did my third reality show this year, right? And I've been over the course of 15 years or whatever it is, I've been on TV. And I have, I don't know, like, my Twitter is maybe 25,000 or something. And my other friends that were on Big Brother, what you know, that show airs three times a week. There's that web version of it. And... It's, oh, you mean porn on Showtime? <laughs> and they have, you know, half a million. And so they can charge. They all retired. I mean, they all can make six figures just posting shit to their, just endorsing things. Is that uh, really how much money you can make just yes, off endorsing Yes, but things? I can't. I can't charge that much. I mean, <laughs> I just don't true. understand that. I mean, yeah, the, I guess it is almost a generational thing or a gener, you know, shout out to the millennials, you know, for capitalizing on that opportunity that is... I guess social media like as a job but at the same time you don't even have to be successful on the game show like you can just be kind of like appealing to fans or you can be controversial right so like that one big brother guy that got the chick pregnant like that's a great story someone got someone else preggers in the house yeah I'm the yes and Poor then she lost the baby. We, whoa. Shit. <laughs> and then there's like a series of That's heavy on a that Monday. Bizarre. <laughs> no, we're just anyway, but we because that. even though he was like an early boot, he's he's got a, you know, yeah. he's got a controversy. So now they're well, let's, set. I mean, think about the Robin Ambers of the world. Those guys were early seasoners. They capitalized on it. And then they rocked face. And like you mentioned, just do an amazing race, which we'll dive into that. And we reserve the C word for certain people here. And I'll let you dictate when we drop it. But anyway, Robin Amber, they seem to dominate Survivor, well, social media, and no, amazing No, he's race. got a real job. And oh, do they not do that full time? No, not at all. But uh, he didn't dominate anything. He got picked to go on Survivor many times, and, then and they, they made a star the of him. Race, didn't they not? They didn't. No, they didn't win Amazing Race. Did I think they? They did. I don't think so. I'm. 
They won the whole thing? I don't think so. I thought so. This is, I see, I didn't watch much Amazing Race. I, I randomly the got picked to do it. The early seasons <laughs> were great because they really made them do some really difficult shit. Like, and Amber did it not was win. very hard. Like, they gave them a slot of money, and it's like, if your fl- flight costs more than that, you have to wait until there's a cheaper flight. But then teams yeah, would check they kind in of like pussied two out. days later. Yeah, you know, I know. Like, it wasn't very exciting. Yeah. So, I mean, it used to be awesome. It was, but, I mean, I still watch all of these if that's not very apparent. Which one was your favorite? Of, of the shows? Oh, Amazing Race is so much more fun than Survivor, despite the fact that I didn't do as well as I would have liked. It's a you did really well. I mean, except it's a for fun, those, those yeah. two bitches. It wasn't, there's nothing I could have done differently, but it was really, I, it's, I would never ever want to do Survivor again. I would do Amazing Race again every single time in a heartbeat. It's such a cool show. And they are so respectful. Production is so polite and professional and just so different from Survivor to me. So I, all right, let's talk quickly about that then, because this is what I want to talk about now. What happens when the camera goes off? Do y'all just go sleep behind the camera like Bear Grylls? Well, there's an easy answer to that. There is no time when the camera is not on. There is no going so, off. So, like, at Survivor, y'all are never eating things that y'all never. aren't actually never. catching? Never, 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 never. So y'all are eating everything? Never. They, they really, I know you mentioned like they, they're giving them, like in my, my, I did, I played classic Survivor, right? Like the first time I got food, my first season, the first food winning challenge was day 19. So like we, we didn't have, in, in that season we didn't have coconuts. We were kicking over termite mounds to eat the termites. Like we didn't have any, there was no fruit, there was nothing. Wait, hold in, on, I wrote down that location for those that are looking. I think it's over the G. Gabon. Gabon. Yeah, Survivor Africa. Gabon. Yeah, so they didn't do anything. Now, my second season in Carmon, they started to loosen up a little bit just in that, like, all of a sudden there were coconuts everywhere, and I was like, but there aren't even, like, palm trees. And I realized that they, they like, drop off coconuts, basically, so that you have something. But the real reason they do that is because it's not very interesting to watch people faint or to get medevac from the game. That's not the goal. Right. And so over time, it became too difficult. They were There was too many problems. With people getting... What happened to the guy that fell face first in the fire? What happened to him? Uh, he guy? went to school for... art school. He went to prison for child pornography. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, whammy. Um, yeah. Okay. So How do you not like, know that? That's that, like the most exciting thing that ever happened. Kind of, that's kind of like the pre-karma thing. Like he fell in the fire and then got into they, child no, porn? No, he fell in the fire and then he got brought back. And then they found child porn on his computers, and then now he's in prison. All right, let's talk okay. dirtiest secret. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, well no, so dirtiest not, secrets is next. Though. I'm not the biggest. Like, I don't watch all these reality shows, so I'm just really curious. Like, how did you go about getting on Survivor really quick? And then, yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, I, I have no idea how that starts. And then, even if you get on Survivor and you get kicked off like day one, right? You what happens? Get a little paycheck. Yes. So. um... I want to be respectful of our NDAs, so I don't want to like oh, no. like overly share, but I think this is pretty much public knowledge. We all get a certain amount based on how long you make it, right? and then everyone gets a large check for going to the finale, and the reason they do that is because otherwise, people who didn't do well or who have bad blood are just going to be like, fuck you, I'm not going to the finale, but they be, there's a big ass check connected to the finale, so everybody yeah. goes to the finale. What did you do to get on the first season? Sure, so I didn't do anything um, at all. I actually, <laughs> so what happened is, um, back in that day, the the only thing that was around was MySpace. I had moved out to L.A., not with any intention to be on TV at all. Um, I just I got to L.A. I was in L.A. for about four months. I, do, I was doing pharmaceutical sales, and um, I get an email, like a total, like, I thought spam email on MySpace that said, we are looking for a brunette in your age range that's not a model or an actress. For uh, They didn't even just, like, they didn't beat around the bush. They were like, for Survivor. And we're in the end casting phases. Would you be interested in coming in to talk? So I thought this was very, very funny because my ex-boyfriend was Ethan Zahn. And Ethan won season two, Africa. And so I call Ethan and I'm like, That's wouldn't weird. it be hilarious if by some random stroke of, like, I moved to L.A. and somebody finds me and casts me on Survivor. And he's like, well, there's a very easy way to figure out if this is bullshit or not. Call and demand to speak with Lynn Spillman, who at the time was the head of casting for Amazing Race, uh, Big Brother, and Survivor. So I get on the phone. I call the number, which all of this is ballsy in general because I think most people would have just, like, deleted the email. But I was like, fuck it. I don't know. This would just be really funny. And I never saw a minute of his seasons at all, even though he won and even though we dated for a long time. I never watched it. I just Were wasn't. you dating this guy at the time? No, we had been broken up for probably like a, a year or two at that what point. Is the it was just li- random. What are the likelihood? I know. Well, it gets better. That's so wild. now I call up and I'm <laughs> so like, wild. and there's like little, there's, you know, 
some person at the front desk answers, and I'm like, yes, I need to speak with Lynn Spellman. It's important. And they're like, um, okay, please hold. They transfer you to someone else. And I'm like, I'm only going to speak with Lynn Spellman, so get Lynn Spellman on the phone, or I'm going to hang up. And so finally, Lynn Spellman gets on the phone, and she's like, she's super pissed that she, that I got to her, right? Like that's not supposed to happen. That's like calling the White House and getting the that's president. Why she like, put you on. So she yeah, goes, who is the fuck is this? So she goes, all right. All right, look, you got me on the phone. Why don't you tell me why you want to be on Survivor? I go, why the fuck would I do that? You sent me the email. You tell me why I should be on Survivor. And she goes, oh, my God, we need to see you immediately. So they bring me in, and I didn't know at the time they had filled almost every archetype except the bitch, but I didn't know that. And I also didn't watch the show, so I had no idea anything about it. But they always have, like, one Asian, one gay, one, you know, they have, it's very, there's an archetype. There's a nerd. There's a, you know, right. hot guy. So they didn't have the bitch role so, filled. And so, God damn it. so she, they, they asked me to come, um, and the first meeting I had, because they were so late stage into production at this, or into casting, the first meeting I had was Jeff Probst and Mark Burnett and a bunch of other producers in a room, which most people will be very intimidated by, right? If you're a big fan of the show and you're sitting there and you're, you're, you're in one chair and then in front of you are. dress like pros today. What? I just like Jeff, Jeff today. I wore my oh. best Jeff gear. <laughs> mute, just mute shit colors and random ass boots. Yeah, that's kind of Jeffy. Although he wears that stupid necklace. Yeah, I have stupid. And usually, I have stupid jewelry. <laughs> you do have some stupid. But you were in there giving zero fucks. Right. So, so what happens is I sit down and I'm like on the verge of yawning. Like I could, I was like. I literally said to them, they said, we need you to be um, available from this. I said, you, they gave me like a four hour. And I go, you can, you can find one hour. You can have one hour. I have to go back to work. So I, I walk in and there's Mark Burnett, Jeff Probst. And Jeff is leading the questioning. And then there's a bunch of producers. And he's like, so, it, you know, it, it, on your application, it says that you never have slept outside. And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, we don't want anyone that's going to quit. And how do we know you're not going to quit? And I said, I'm a Jew. It's a million dollars. Do you have another question for me? And then he's like, you know, what kinds of guys do you like? And at the time, my boyfriend oh, was married. And so I oh, said. Oh, your Time out. Let's talk about that, yeah. too. I, had a, I was dating a married guy for three years. So at that time, I was with the married guy. So he goes, what? so Mark Burnett's like, what kinds of men do you like? I was like, married ones. And then I just deadpan, like, look at him. So at this point, they're foaming at the mouths. They're like, there's no way she's real. So they were like, you know, please don't change anything. Like, we would really love to have you. And I was like, I'm not sure that I want to do this. If, if my job won't let me go, I'm not going to go. So my job says no, and I tell them no. And then they are, Lynn Spellman, who is maybe the best casting director ever, she calls me up and she does the, 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 the like, plea of your life. Like, she's like, when else will you have a one in 18 shot at a million dollars? Like, think of what you could do with that money. You, you're a pharmaceutical up. You'll get another pharmaceutical job. Like, she basically convinces me to do it. So I do it. I quit my job and I go out there. But the stakes were high for me. Like, I lost, you know, I moved all the way to California. I lost my relocation package. I had a company car I lost. You know, I didn't have a ton of savings. So I really, like, had a lot. I had a lot when I went out there that I needed to prove. And I think, by the grace of God, I made it. But you did have friends that had private jets, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't have any of those. So. That's like our friend that's super yeah. smart and went to like uh, two or three schools that are all brilliant. Yeah. He always had, you know, his brain to fall back yeah, on. Yeah, and I mean, my parents are rich, but I still felt like... What the fuck? <laughs> we hadn't even crossed okay. that point yet. Were okay, they like sold well, Oxycontin my father, rich to the, re to the no. rednecks, or were they like... No, but my father would probably rich. like me to clarify that we were upper middle class, but like we had a Rolls Royce when I was a kid, so I think we were... That's we had a tennis court and a Rolls Royce. Upper middle class? Yeah. I know. That's the point one percent. It's a neurotic Jewish thing to pretend so, you don't really have money. Okay, so yeah, so you acted like a badass. So you incorporated the bitch role without knowing. Like I thought I was knowing. going to be the hero. But I that's awesome. Literally Wait, did, everyone why in did America. You, think you were going to be the protagonist. Why? I thought that everyone in America would side with me, and they'd be like, "Oh my God, Sugar's such a whore. She's so annoying. Like, go Corinne, tell her off." But instead. Sugar looks like this amazing, sweet, you know, she cries all the time. So America really sided with her. And what's interesting is that it was so much hate directed at me. But then when I would meet people in the streets, they'd be like, I really hated you on the show, but can I get a picture? And I'm like, you know, maybe don't open with that. Right. Like, <laughs> I led a totally different way. I was like, ah, look at it. See, that, that's the move. That's the move. Yeah. So the, the and last LG question did I, look like you were you were looking smoke that day. You were you. trying to impress that guy who's definitely I not really wasn't. You're that was not a good day number in. one, I'd say. Yeah, I mean taking him to a free booze and food event is well, always fun. Yeah. Hey, do you use coupons? If you had a gift card from somebody, would you use that on a date? Definitely. Oh, on a date. If I, let's say I had a gift card to not TGI Fridays, but some other semi nice place, would you allow that as a? a 
You know, I'm trying to think if I would judge that. I think I would be totally fine with it. In fact, I went on, I went, I go on a lot of dates because that's what my podcast is about. So I have a podcast called My Best Friend Corinne, and it's mostly just about my life and lots of dates that I go on. Oh, yeah. It's part of it. Oh, good. No, and so I will often go, like, I think dating is an adventure, and I like meeting people, and I like spending a few minutes getting involved in someone else's life. So my second, so my